Hi there. Now, in this question, we're given that the point P represents the complex number Z on an argon diagram, where the modulus of Z minus I equals 2, and the locus of P as Z varies is the curve C. Now, we've got a transformation T from the Z plane to the W plane, and it's given by W equals Z plus I, all divided by 3 plus I Z, where Z does not equal 3I. And the point Q is mapped by T onto the point R. Given that R lies on the real axis, in this part we've got to show that Q lies on the curve C. So as usual, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then, if you had a go. So, first of all, let's just get an overview of what's going on here. We've got our transformation between the two planes, the Z-plane and the W-plane. We've got a point Q then in the Z-plane. And it maps onto a point then R on the W-plane under this transformation T that we've got here. And we're told that any point in the W plane just travels along the real axis here. So what I'm going to do is let Z equal X plus I, Y. And I'm going to substitute this into our equation here for W and then split this into real parts and an imaginary parts and then I know that since W is a point that moves along the real axis here the imaginary part of W must equal zero. So I'm going to form an equation based on the fact that the imaginary part is equal to zero and hopefully it will take us to this particular curve. And remember this particular curve is a circle with a radius of 2 and the center is at 0, 1. So let's start then by substituting this into our equation here. So if we do that then what we get is that W will equal, for Z here we'll put X plus I, Y and then we've got plus another I and then we're dividing all of this then by 3 plus i z. So it'd be 3 plus i all multiplied by z, which is x plus i y. Now, if we just tidy this up in the sense of grouping together the real parts and the imaginary parts, we've got x is the real part. Here, we can just group the imaginary part as y plus 1 all multiplied by i there. And then in the denominator here, for the real parts here, we've just got 3. And then I can see we're going to get i times iy. That's going to be minus y. So we've got 3 minus y as a real part there. And then the only imaginary part here is the x part. So that's going to be plus ix. Now I need to split this up into real and imaginary parts. So in order to do that now, I need to multiply top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator here. In other words, multiply the top and bottom by 3 minus y minus ix. OK, so just put that in then. So the bottom here is also multiplied by 3 minus y minus ix. So if we just border this off, come down there, now we know that W goes along the real axis here. So that means that the imaginary part of W must be equal to zero. So I'll just put now the imaginary part of W okay, equals zero. And so therefore, if I look at what we get out of this for the imaginary part of W, I'll equate it to zero. Well, taking the numerator here, when we multiply this with this, okay, we're going to have, for the imaginary part, 
x times minus ix. That's going to be minus x squared. We're going to get an imaginary part when we multiply y plus 1i with the 3 minus y here. So we're going to have plus y plus 1 multiplied by 3 minus y. And this will be all over the denominator, which when we multiply this out, we should be familiar with this, this will be the difference of two squares, we'll just get 3 minus y all squared. And then to this, we'll get the square of ix. And if we square that, that's just going to give us plus x squared. So that's our denominator. And this will all equal 0. So that's the imaginary part of w, which has to equal 0. Now if I multiply both sides by the denominator here, it just means that the numerator will equal 0. So therefore we're going to have minus x squared and if I multiply this bracket out what I get is plus 2y and then minus y squared and then plus 3 and that's going to equal 0. And if I rearrange this by timesing through both sides by negative 1 I'm going to get x squared then plus y squared and then minus 2y, and then minus 3, and that's going to equal 0. And if I complete the square on the y terms here, the y squared and the minus 2y, I'm going to have plus and then y, and I halve the coefficient of y, so that would be minus 1. Square that. This would give us, if expanded, y squared minus 2y plus 1. So I don't need the plus 1, so I'll take it away. And then I've got that minus 3, and that equals 0. Minus 1, minus 3, well that's negative 4. If I add that to both sides, I end up with x squared plus y minus 1, all squared, equals 4. And you should recognize this then as the Cartesian equation of a circle. A circle, center, 0, 1 and radius 2. And that is exactly what this represents here. So therefore, what we can conclude is that Q lies on the curve C. So if we go back to our drawing here, we've got the circle then with center 0, 1, radius 2. So the point Q then lies on the curve C. Okay?